Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you are listening and enjoying the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast, please share the podcast with at least one friend. Also, rate and leave a comment in iTunes as it truly helps the show. I love interacting with you guys, so please go visit the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast on Facebook and Instagram and connect with me. I really like it when I get the feedback and just see what you guys are actually doing. And this is some great news. If you are attending Podcast Movement 18 in Philadelphia in July, make sure you come by and say, hey, Emmett, how you doing during my Pod Passion seminar. Today on the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast, my guest is Carolyn Hauser Carson, author of Blossom, Seven Steps to Sexual Healing. 13 years ago, Carolyn came to America from Germany with $7 in her pocket. A dream that she would be able to help others. Carolyn has encountered many difficult life situations and circumstances that have helped define her and transform her into the person she is today. Through remembering her own childhood sexual trauma, recovering from 10 years of an eating disorder, getting divorced and going through bankruptcy, to now being married to her divine partner and soulmate, Paul, and helping over 5,000 people heal, find love, create success in their life and business, all while growing her own business into a multi-six-figure company. So stay tuned. It was a really great interview We had an awesome time, even though we're talking about a very serious subject with the Me Too movement, we laughed a lot because we just bonded and interacted as humans. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. Please visit iTunes, Stitcher, or EmmettMuckles.com to listen to all the episodes for free. Carolyn, how are you doing today? I am doing great. I'm so happy to be here with you. So it's really prevalent that, and and things are timely that I got to speak with you because of the Me Too movement. And so what is your connection to the Me Too movement? That's a really good question. Um, I actually didn't know I was sexually molested or abused until in my 30s. And uh, up until then, I had, um, I, I mean, I had some you know, troubles and tribulations in my life, but I really um, thought I had a golden childhood. I studied to be a humanistic psychotherapist and a naturopathic doctor in my 20s and um, thought I had worked through all my stuff during that training, basically. And then when my daughter turned three in my early 30s, my memory started to come up and um it threw me for a loop and also made me think that with all my training and all my background and all my knowledge about personal healing, um, this must have to do something with my purpose. And so I actually created a healing journey, not just for myself, but with, actually I, I should backtrack because I went on this healing journey myself with other women. So I, as I was helping myself, I was guiding a whole group of women through the journey and that journey became the book and my book is on sexual healing and that that's my connection to the me too movement but i'm i'm one of the me too people too so you let me ask you this uh, okay. and i'm going to digress a little bit and i know there's a little feedback in on my side so i can hear my own voice but that's neither here nor there there are a lot of women who are coming out and and yeah. saying that they've experienced some things and some of the women, in particular, I think of uh, what's the comedian's name, where there was a consensual uh, act that came on, but then she, for some odd reason, she didn't like the interaction and called him out on it. Do you think that those things are all in the same group, or we have to really look at the acts that are happening with some people? Um, I think they're not in the same group. I do think that, I actually do think that people are hypersensitized right now and 
Um, I do think that there's a lot of good men actually who might have no ill intention and women don't speak up. You know, oftentimes we don't speak up because we're trained um, or, tra- you know, the way we're raised is to um, please other people. And so I think in many situations, um, women could actually say something and have the choice. And if the man just knew, he would, you know, he would stop or change. That's one thing. And then obviously sexual abuse, like true sexual abuse oftentimes has less to do with sex actually than with power and somebody really, you know, being being mentally ill or yeah, very, very out of alignment basically. Right. So there's there's different there's different degrees and different things we're gonna and what I find very saddening is like the the general rift right now between men and women because I don't think that women as women were just the victims. You know, it's there's two sides to every story. Yeah. You know, one of the you things know, that uh, yeah. I, I was dying to talk with you about, because this is so prevalent in the narrative nowadays, but people aren't really having two-way conversations about it. And this is really good that I can I can talk with someone who has, is, this is a part of their life. They're helping people, uh, writing about it and helping other folks as well. So why is it just beginning now that people are coming out? and actually speaking upon it? That is a really good question. <laughs> I published my book six years ago and nobody wanted to talk about it. I was like, <laughs> actually, you know, that's not true. I did book signings and book readings and, you know, there were several men that were were um, in the bookstore coincidentally and they were all very encouraging. So there were men that came by and encouraged me and then very few people that really showed up for the talk. And um, so I'm really happy that people are ready to talk about it because the, the well, you know, the obvious thing is because of the president, right? But then the other thing is, well, now the time, you know, the time, the time is, the time has come for healing, you know, not for blaming and, 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 and pointing fingers, but for healing. Do you think it's a generational thing where uh, the the younger women today are a little bit more open and more in, in touch with themselves and in touch with society? Uh, particularly, I think about my now my middle daughter. She's 26, and she has a very different take on things than my oldest daughter had and maybe even my wife had, you know, different mm-hmm. philosophy. So I'm wondering if that's a part of it. Do you think that? For sure. Those younger women yeah. feel far more empowered than generations previously? I think so. You know, I mean, the fe- you know, we had the feminist movement and that did a lot for our, for the liberation and, and in some ways and in other ways it made it harder for us as women because it, it made the divide between men and women bigger. And so I think that, that the young women today, um, they do have more freedom. You know, I have much more freedom than my mom had my, my daughter has more freedoms than I do have just because my mom has worked on herself and, you know, has created more freedom for herself. I worked on myself and have liberated myself. And so when we do that, when we work on ourselves and help ourselves to become more free, we automatically set the next generation free too. They become much more free to be themselves. So let's talk about, you said you wrote this book years ago, but now it's becoming prevalent. You know, all things come to light in their right time. So can you give me some insights in the book? What drove you to produce this works and your journey with the book? Yeah, um, I think that there's a huge misconception that trauma, any kind of trauma actually, is a mental issue or a psychological issue. My my own story was that I went to therapy and it just didn't help. And I know for a lot of people um, that, you know, they go to therapy for years and years and years. And, you know, there's great therapists out there, I'm sure. And I think it's great for people to have somebody to go to. But in my experience, um, the healing really comes from understanding that when trauma happens, it's an impact on our nervous system. It alters our brain chemistry. So we're physiologically altered or changed after that happens. And so any amount of talking will not make any dent in reversing that or healing that or changing that fact. And so I feel very passionate about letting people know that because there's such a simple solution to helping people heal. That's good. And, and I mean, that's really awesome because it's – for those of you, if I'm, you have to forgive me. Uh, the book is Blossom, Seven Steps to Sexual Healing. And you really can break it down into seven steps? Well, you know, our, our mind our mind likes to 
sees things logical, and seven is a really good number for the mind. And so, no, you know, healing is a continuous, ongoing process. I use the, the things that I teach in the book every day. But like I said, in order for somebody to go on a journey, you need to start, start somewhere, and you need to, you know, it is somewhat of, of a step-by-step process. So, you know, for somebody, they could just take the first step and live with that for a while and have huge breakthroughs already, or any of the steps for that matter. Yeah. But that makes sense, though, because some people, it's kind of like some people have a natural gravitation to any particular process where uh, it may take one or two steps or you may show them the path and they will lead their own way while others need to get, you need to show them all the way to the end. So that makes absolute sense. And I wanted to ask you about uh, your, when did you come to America first? I came to America first in 2000 and at the end of 2003 and then really I moved here in 2004. And did you see any differences between the way women are treated in Europe versus the way women are treated in the United States? That's a good question because um, people in general are different. So I would say, you know, in Germany, (laughs) so in Germany, people are less open and less friendly, you know, in your everyday interactions, but then they're very reliable and once you, once you make you know, once you make friends and find friends. And then here, it's really easy for me. It was really easy to have friends and be welcome and, you know, have like my, my everyday life is very, very pleasant, much more pleasant than in Germany, I would say. And it's taken me a little longer to form really strong, deep bonds. So that's the biggest difference. So I don't think that's gender specific, though. And it might just something that's specific to me. Is, or is it just a cultural thing between the United States and Europe? Yeah. I do think there's a difference between American women and European women, though. You know, um, I've, had, I've had some men say that, and, and this is my wife. Yes, I have that, too. <laughs> and this is what's weird, because I can, I can almost speak from experience. I'm going to say it that way, because my wife is Austrian. And, uh, uh-huh. and, yeah. and but she's, very, she's younger than I am. She's quite a few years younger than I am. And there is a marked difference in, in certain mindsets that uh, I've come across. <laughs> yes, my husband and you would have a great conversation about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's get back to the topic at hand, though. Yes. So, so why are some of these uh, people who have suffered abuse, um, the survivors, why are they at a disadvantage when it comes to creating like se- successful lives and successful relationships? Because when trauma happens, your brain chemistry gets altered in a way where so essentially we have different parts of our brain and the, the, the oldest part is the reptilian brain. It's right at the, at the base of your brain. If you take your hand and you put it in your neck, that's kind of where the reptilian brain is. And as its name says, it's, it's you know, a reptile brain. It's a very instinctual old brain. It is also the, the first part of our brain where information comes in from the outside world, from our senses. So it's basically the first um, gate of information. And when trauma happens, this part of the brain gets put more in charge than in a normal brain, which means that for somebody who has experienced trauma, they're more prone to seeing life as complicated, as a threat, as a thing that you need to be running from or that you have to survive, that you have to struggle with because your creative brain and your creative solutions are not accessible to you. The the creative part of our brain is in the much higher region, literally the on the top of our head. And any kind of um, progress, progressive ideas or things that really serve you in terms of thriving, all those ideas are received or born in that part of your brain, in the upper part of your brain. And so when, when trauma happens, you you live more out of the lower part of your brain, which then leads you to creating a life of more struggle than, than good things. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Trying to make brain chemistry really simple, which is very complex. <laughs> but you're not the first guest that I've had that's talked about the reptilian brain. Good. Uh, it's, yeah. it's in, in the last month, it's come up consistently across my interviews to, um, talking about the psychology of people. And oh, good. So when you 
you also do some speaking. So do you have any workshops or things like that that you're involved with mm-hmm. or creating for people to help mm-hmm. heal themselves or, or there's more than to you than just uh, this topic here. So can you explain a little bit more about what you do and what you offer? Yeah, I do speak. And then I, I have built my, I have two little children. So I have built my business. Well, they're not so little anymore, but when they were little, I built my business exclusively online. So I do do online groups, online courses, and then I also do in-person retreats. And um, I do the speaking online and I speak in person and, and travel to beautiful places and meet people there. And <laughs> is this geared just to women or is it open dialogue for men and women? Um, mostly women resonate more with the work that I do, but I love working with men just as much and I love working with couples. So what I do is, you know, works universally. It's just because of the message. Uh, women generally are more drawn to it, but I do have... You know, and the reason I ask this is because we're in the Aquarian age. I mean, or we're rapidly heading to the Aquarian age. And in my life, I've seen the feminine become more powerful, more present in the masculine. So that's why I'm wondering why there's not more communal outreach between men and women and knowledge sharing. Have you seen anything uh, that relates to that? Um... I think with the sex, you know, specifically with the sexual abuse, it's such a, um, you know, the women were the first one to say, me too, right? And there's many, many men where they have gone through similar experiences. But there, I think there's, it's much harder for men, you know, it's hard enough for women to come out. But I think it's even much harder to come out with, with it for men because it's, it's, there's so much shame. Yeah. Um, guilt yeah. connected to it. I think that's that's one of the main reasons why there is a difference um, in who we see stepping forward and doing this work. And then in general, I think women are, you know, for us women, we are more, the more emotional. Um, feminine is more connected to the emotional body. So I think for us, it's just generally more easy. It's more in our nature to do emotional work. Yeah. And so men have to work a little harder. It's a little more scary for them. So they need much more courage, I think, than we as women. It's easier for us. You know what's really uh, what I found recently? The actor Terry Crews, he's a very big guy, played football, but he's he's an actor. And he actually brought uh, forth some information about him being abused about someone in Hollywood. And I was watching it closely and I found out that they dismissed it because they said the statute of limitations was of was over. <laughs> I was like, ooh. So if any men were going to come forward after that, that probably kind of killed it. So I understand exactly what you mean now because, you know, some people just need somebody to lead the way before they say, okay, it's okay for me to do this, as it seems like. Because this started really, um, the snowball started with Harvey Weinstein. And kind of moved mm-hmm. from there. So there was somebody who led the charge, but there's nobody for men. Not that I'm mm-hmm. discounting women or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. But I want to ask you about this pleasure intelligence. What is that? Basically, what I've discovered in my own journey through, I ended up in a situation where I was bankrupt, going through a divorce, stage four adrenal fatigue, had two small children, no money, and basically a complete state of lack. And um, it was so bad that I had an outer body experience because I just couldn't take it anymore. And during that outer body experience, I realized that we need a new kind of intelligence, which has to do with pleasure intelligence. We are all really trained to work hard or to think that the more we suffer, the better, you know, the more the, the more God will love us, or all those kinds of things that are totally wrong. And what's really true is that we're all meant to thrive and have a great life and in order to do so, we need to develop what I call a pleasure intelligence or a pleasure IQ. And the definition of a pleasure IQ is your ability to allow pleasure in all areas of your life. Have you seen where some people just cannot accept a pleasurable emotional experience in their life? Yes. Most people don't know how to allow themselves anything, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You just summed up America in a really short nutshell, didn't you? (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, and then we need all kinds of substitutes, you know. That's why a lot of industries are thriving, like the ice cream industry. And, yeah, I don't want to go anywhere else. But, yeah. <laughs> See, I like to have fun, yeah, like you know, even, even even if we're talking about a serious subject. But, you know, a lot of times you just have to step back from yourself because one of the journeys I've been on is just going simple. It's getting as simple as possible. And I find – and it's weird because pe- I, I'm a different person. And people say, why are you so quiet? And I say, why do you talk so much? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I love simplicity. So I always look for the most simplest way and the, the easiest way. For so people. I want to ask you, how did this, how did your journey in the United States begin? How did your practice, how did, what you do now, how did you get to that moment? Because you said you went through a divorce, you went through some things. How did you build yourself back to say, here's the path I'm going to go on? Um, well, for me, my journey was really that I could never figure out what I was going to do and how I was going to make money until my mid-30s. So even when I was here, when I left Germany, I was I had all my training, and I was helping people, but I was mostly helping people for free and doing trades and, and that kind of stuff. And then I came here and didn't have a work permit, and I wasn't going to go back to school for four years to get all my licenses. Um, so I just actually... I'm trying to think what I started doing. I, I didn't do much in the beginning because there was not much for me to do. Um, and then I, I got pregnant. Um, so, so, I, I, so that was that. And then I was home with my daughter for the first year, which was really a blessing. And then during that year, because I really didn't have to worry about, you know, I actually, the first year I came here, I came as a student and I worked um, through the college I did, I cleaned. Uh, I cleaned the, the dorms for the college. So that's how I made money when when I first came. And then I got pregnant the second year. And that allowed me to just be home. And I started reading, you know, Harv Eckert, The Millionaire Mind. And I, I had no idea about entrepreneurialism or anything like that. And so that first year of my, my daughter being born, I started really immersing myself into, the, I think that was the year The Secret came out. And this whole world opened up for me. And then I decided that I wanted to have an online-based business selling uh, organic children's T-shirts and um, got a grant to go to a business, local business school in Santa Barbara. We have a really great nonprofit that teaches women about business. And um, I developed a business plan and was going to go into business for selling the children's clothing and um, ended up not doing that because it got me to the Internet. And I realized what a great opportunity the Internet was when I embraced it and I learned Internet marketing and then I remembered my sexual abuse. I started writing the book. I started promoting um, the idea and, and attracting people to go on the journey with me. And that's really what started my business as a um, you know, transformational leader in the States. So before that, I really wasn't making any real I never made more than $10,000 a year up until four years ago. Wow. Yeah. I didn't have a career. I just could, I knew I had all these gifts, but I just could not figure out how to make money. And you live in California, right? Yeah, I live in Santa Barbara. <laughs> How is that possible? The most expensive place in the world. <laughs> How is that possible? You know, you just said T. Harp Eckert, and I had never heard of him until about a year ago when a coach friend of mine, her name is Market, and she lives in Las Vegas, she just ranted and raved about him. I was like, who is this guy? And he had written all these books. And you just said it. You're the only other person who I've known who have brought it up. But the thing is, she's from Austria and you're from Germany. And was this a really big thing in Europe with T. Harv Eckert? No, I, I met him here through some people. I mean, met, I learned about him here. Yeah, I don't know. That's so Maybe bizarre. No one Maybe it's just I'm in the closet. It's <laughs> clueless. <laughs> Maybe you weren't struggling with money as much as I was. I was just like, please, somebody help me figure this out. I have to figure this money thing out. My parents were like going crazy. You know, I was 35 when I started. <laughs> I mean, I mean, well, I come from, uh, I'm from Detroit, and I come from a whole line of people who know how to hustle. Yeah. So that was, it's, that was, that, my parents know. are teachers, you know, <laughs> my parents are teachers. <laughs> my dad went and worked at the same school his entire life, never missed a day. Yeah, I come from a long line of people who know how to go get it. <laughs> yeah, it's very different. My dad thinks I'm crazy to be an entrepreneur. No, that, that's what America's for. That's what it was founded on. So what's your next exactly. steps? What, what are you moving forward to in uh, past 2018, 2019? 
Um, I'm really moving into doing much more with my second book is The Pleasure IQ. So Blossom, the healing journey is really a, a really great step for people to start getting into the healing and um, getting some, getting into their power and starting to feel better. And then um, my second book, The Pleasure IQ, which is hopefully coming out soon, it's all ready to go. It just needs a publisher. Um, th- that really is the key for people working with their own energy and getting themselves into energetic alignment with the things that they that they feel are right for them in their life. And I do retreats around, I already do retreats where I take people, it's a, it's a four-step process and I take people through that process. And uh, I want to do much more. I would love to do one every month with 10 people. You know, so how, more. so when are your, your retreats and how can people contact you so that they can find out all your works? Um, the best thing is for people to go to my website, which is womeninthefloor.com. On there, there's a free gift that teaches people how to heal their nervous system so they can really upgrade their energetic frequency and a tool that will help them make decisions that are right for them every time so they can get those two gifts, women in the flow. Also, Blossom is on the website and then a button where you can contact me and find out about retreats. My next retreat is in October. We're just starting to put that on the calendar and filling it and um, it's going to be near Cancun in Mexico. Very nice on the beach very healing so you but that's one website because you have more than one website Mm -hmm. because I didn't know about women in the flow so what's your how give me all the ways people can contact you Mm -hmm. so women in the flow and then Carolyn Hauser is also a website that might get retired at some point but right now it's still there that's just my name C-A-R-O-L-I-N H-A-U-S-E-R dot com and then Facebook if people want to connect with me Facebook is really a really great way to connect with me as well. And my name is spelled a little, it's German, so it's a little difficult, but it's Carolyn, C-A-R-O-L-I-N, like Caroline, just without an E. And then Hauser is spelled H-A-U-S-E-R. I have to ask you this. Who is your publicist? Um, The publicist that got in touch with you is Jackie Lippin. Because... I see you've been on every kind of show. You've been on. Oh, that, that's I, that's me and my husband. <laughs> Most of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, so you did your. Um, so prior to being with Jackie, you did a lot of yeah. work yourself. And this is, and this is part of the billionaire lifestyle. Is that sometimes you have to go get it yourself first before people exactly. Come yeah. help you. <laughs> I've spent a ton of my money on PR and not, you know, not gotten anywhere. And then I've spun, spent a ton of time and done some of my stuff. So it's been a mix, you know. Jackie has been really great with the radio stuff. So definitely recommend her. So when you, wants, and the know. reason I want to ask you this, because a lot of people don't know. We mm-hmm. all know about being online, but a lot of people don't know about how to really do PR outside of Facebook and the social media sites. Yeah. How did you learn about that? You know, I had, well, I, my dream has been and is to be a best selling author, just like Jack Canfield and Marion Williamson and so forth. And a while ago, I had the, the realization, and when you listen to them, they will actually tell you that you just have to be everywhere, you know, and that means like, you have to be everywhere. So wherever you can go and be with people, whether, you know, it's a small group of people, a, a church, a women's group, an entrepreneurial group, a meetup group, it doesn't matter. You need to be in touch with, like, you need to be in front of people, not just in, on Facebook. And every one of us has a local community where there is many different groups that could benefit from hearing what you have to say. And I mean, I often speak in front of like just four and five people, but the relationships that you can build when it's a small group is really priceless because I have people that have been on my email list for four or five years just because they came to a talk and had intimate time with me. So it's really, uh, you know, that, that's been part of my strategy is to just do these, do what I can do, right? I, like I said, I'm a mom, so I can't speak every night, but... You know, I speak two, two, three times a month, and um, I do it consistently, and even if it's a small group, because so, eventually, eventually, you know, it will snowball. Eventually, people start hearing your name, and then all of a sudden, it seems like you're everywhere. Yeah. 
So yeah. you, that's the book you should write. That's, that's the next book you should write. That's your bestseller right there. Is that gym that you just gave me. How to be everywhere. That's it. That's a great title. How to be everywhere. But you know the the thing is though, I could I couldn't do any of it if my energy wasn't in the right place. So to me, knowing how to manage your own energy and keeping your energy clear and 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 knowing how to nurture yourself and and being in an energy is is the key. Anybody who you know anybody who knows how when you're like when you're depressed you don't want to do anything if you feel when you feel like you know crap you don't have the energy to do anything you don't feel like you could be in front of anyone. So. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you this. I'm on vacation in Florida right now. Usually, I do not I do interviews in my studio at home. So, there's all kinds of stuff that's happening. I have a, a house full of children, like five adults. I have my phone that's going off from um, my man from the Extraordinary Negroes, who, who's my buddy out in California. So... You'll have to excuse if this is not up to par, but still, her information is a jewel because, A, there is a dialogue for if you feel like you've been abused or if you've been mistreated sexually or somebody's exerted their power on you. B, she just gave you a super gem in the fact that you have to be everywhere and you have to be comfortable in yourself first before you can go looking for help from other people. So, like, just the information you've imparted on us, Caroline, is awesome. And I want to stay in contact with you. So when this next book drops, and I'm surprised you're not just doing it yourself or publishing it yourself. I might because, you know, actually, here's the story. I've had it with um, with Neil Donald Walsh's agent and Eckhart Tolle's agent. So, I've had, you know, I've had a good agent, and I've also had a very close book deal almost with um, – um, the publishers from Power of Now, and it's been done for two years, <laughs> and so far it's not been picked <laughs> up. So I'm getting to a point where I'm like, okay, universe, are you trying to tell me something? And truth be told, you make much more money when you publish yourself, and I already know how to publish a book, so I might really, I might get tired of just waiting and do it, just get it out. Yes, you should, and then as soon as you, I'm the be the, I'm the first person you call. Say, Emmett, I am publishing. Let's do this. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> you got to make me your biggest fan. Well, next to your husband, oh, and your thanks. children. <laughs> I appreciate that. So thanks. you know, I I want to ask you uh, this question. This is the last question I'm going to ask you. So your your kids are gone and your husband is gone and you know they're away for a while and you sit down, you're probably watching Scandal on TV with a couple of Moscato or your nice coffee on your couch and you hear the doorbell ring and you go open the door and it's your 19-year-old self sitting there and your 19-year-old self says to you, what can you tell me so this can be a little bit easier on me? It's all going to work out. It's all going to work out. (laughs) You don't have to fret so much. Don't have to worry so much. Don't have to feel so much pressure. It's all going to work out. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's the billionaire lifestyle. Let me let me conclude by saying this, as you guys always know, when you get out the bed, when you get out to go take a shower, pause and look in the mirror. Because... I want you to take some time and spend some time with yourself. Look at your eyes, look at the creases, look at all the stuff, look at the freckles, look at the dark skin, look at the light skin, look at the hair, and just appreciate it. Because you are special, but everyone on the planet is special too, but own your own specialness. As Caroline is really saying, be comfortable with yourself. And once you're comfortable with yourself, then you have the ability to really love someone else. Show that love, show that respect, and show that dignity to the other person that may look back at you once you go out into the world. And with that, be in love and be in peace. Thanks, Carolyn. Thank you so much for having me. And we're out. Peace. Good.